dispatch guest from five seasons of Saturday Night Live, and now she has a show of her own on Tuesdays. She plays a teenage boy on the very funny new show, Chad. It premieres Tuesday on TBS. Please welcome Nassim Pedrad. <laughs> Welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Hi, Guillermo. Hi, how oh, are you? This is very exciting. Thank you for being here in person. <laughs> of course. Uh, Thanks for having. Thanks for giving me a reason to shower and exit my front door. Yeah, and thank you for showering. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I watched your show, and it is so funny. Oh, my God. It is <laughs> such a strange show and so good. I really think it's a fantastic show. And I'll tell you, I would drive by um, your billboard on Sunset Boulevard every night on my way home from work. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Who is yeah. that? What's going on yeah, What here? is going on? Yeah, that because... should be the slogan. What is going <laughs> yeah, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. So much so that I actually looked it up and watched the trailer because I was just like, I have to find out what's going on. I'd see it every night. And uh, sure enough, I watched the whole show, and it's really very funny. Oh, thank you so you, much. You um, really, besides playing a boy, which you are not, you draw <laughs> on um, on your own background. You're not from this country originally. That's right, you know, yes. Although was... you did grow up here. Was, I did, yeah. yeah. All my memories are from here, but I was born in Iran and moved here when I was three. On your own, too. No parents involved. No, just book that ticket. <laughs> really a go-getter. Yeah. <laughs> Wheels up. And you lived in Orange County, right? Uh, I grew up in Orange County. Did yeah. you have a typical Orange County upbringing? Um, yeah, I, you know, I really, my parents were amazing. I did, you know, all the normal things. I was in karate. I, I actually am, thanks to my father, a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. Wow, really? Yeah. Wait, so, <laughs> I should immediately add that I retired in the fifth grade, so. <laughs> I um I loved it though. I loved it. I loved my instructor, Mr. Hamilton. He's <laughs> what kind of a he's name? He's still is in that? my life. He still emails me. Hi, is Mr. Hamilton. Really? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Hamilton. He was awesome. Yeah. And so Mr. Hamilton's a tough guy, huh? He is. Yeah. And um, I mean, <laughs> this was all this... started from my father really being convinced that I would be kidnapped as a child. Oh That's no. Why I was in really taekwondo. So then yeah. he figured you'd be able to fight your fight the attackers off. Yeah, like he thought like, oh, if I put her in taekwondo. She can protect herself and learn self-defense, which is great in theory, but like, I mean, has any small child been abducted and just karateed their way to freedom? I don't think. Is that a thing? I don't, I don't think, think that's so. A, no. Have you had any I, like practical use for your martial no, arts skills? No, it has absolutely not come in handy at all. It does not. I, <laughs> no. And also, like, I mean, I spent so much of my childhood like breaking boards and learning spin kicks, and not once was someone like, oh, if you're kidnapped, like, also scream. Like, just scream louder than you've ever, try running. Like, run in any direction, choose life. No one. So that's your advice to, uh, yeah. yes, would-be kidnappees, yeah. is learn to scream and run. Yeah, more practical, <laughs> I think, yeah. You, um, did you, like, uh, uh, do your parents, are they tra traditional as far as Iranian, Things go like, do they know April Fool's Day? Is oh, that no. something that goes no, on? My sweet no. little immigrant parents really can't wrap their head around April Fool's Day. Um, they just, I mean, or much less any other holiday growing up. And as an immigrant kid, you're like explaining things to them. So I was a normal kid. I was like, you know, April Fool's would play pranks on our friends. And my dad would be like, You lied to him? This, <laughs> this good friend of yours, Chris Kugel, you lied to his face. How? <laughs> How can this man ever trust you again? And I'm like, no, it's it's a full thing here. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm the normal one in this conversation. I would imagine trying to explain Groundhog Day then would be oh my God. completely like, out no of the chance. question. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, in our culture, like a couple days before Persian New Year, we have a tradition where we straight up jump over four feet of fire while reciting a chant. So I had to then explain that to my American friends. And Is the four feet goes. To say I struggle. The four feet goes own. this way, not this way, right? No, it goes this way. Oh, it goes. You get a real like head start from a few feet back. I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how shish kebab was invented? <laughs> oh my God. Maybe that so. That would have been amazing. If you're, you're running fast enough, you don't feel yourself fully engulfed in flames, which is what's happening. <laughs> yeah. So why did you decide with this show to play a, what, 14-year-old boy? 14-year-old boy, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I love writing about adolescence. Mine was very awkward, so I, you know, made a show about a boy who has a very awkward adolescence. And um, I, you know, 
he was, he was born Faraday Dune, but uh-huh. there's an episode where you find out that he changes his name to Chad. Changes his name to yeah, Chad, which of all I names. could really relate to. Although <laughs> I was unsuccessful in changing my name to Nikki, oh. I had a real campaign going on as, really? as the age of like eight for a while. Yeah, <laughs> Nikki <laughs> it didn't land, but it was because I would go to like amusement parks and just really pissed me off that I could never find the tiny keychain with my name on it. Can't find a keychain, can't find a license plate, can't find any of that stuff. And I would imagine Starbucks would be a problem. Everything, yeah. And my parents were like, Nassim's cool, it means cool breeze. And I'm like, it's not cool. Everyone calls me Nissan. You know, the car no (laughs) one's excited about. That's what people would call me. Even to this day, my very own iPhone that I'm constantly typing my name into just always wants to autocorrect Nassim to one of two things, basin or Nazism. I think you want to go with Basin in that I case, have, yeah. Oh, my God, I've fired off so many emails that have been like, great catching up with you. Talk to you soon. Nazism. <laughs> You've seen my name before. You're a, you're a smartphone. Yeah, it's, uh, I own you. I, I'm not trying to touch on Nazism ever. You, uh, you, so you played this 14-year-old kid, Chad, and then the other kids, or not that you're a kid, yes. but you're playing a kid, are actually kids. Yes. Whereas you are not a kid. That is which correct. Which has got to be a little bit strange when you're on set being a kid with kids when you're yeah. not a kid. Yeah, well, when you're filming, it doesn't feel strange because I'm playing a character and we're all 14 and we're in the moment and we're on the same page. And then the director yells, cut, and then it just really hits you <laughs> that you're a 39-year-old woman trying to <laughs> connect to a 14-year-old boy. Do you try to connect with them? Oh, my god. I mean, not anymore. Like, it, it's just so crazy. They, they're they actual kids. So they're, like, talking about K-pop and TikTok. And I'm like, you guys, I think my landscape architect is a pathological liar. And they're like, what? <laughs> They're like, we don't understand how to engage Maybe just with hit them you. with some of that Taekwondo yeah. and they'll think you're cool, yeah. Yeah. Well, the show is super funny. It is called Chad. It premieres next Tuesday on TBS. Nassim Pedron, thank you very much thank for being you. here, Nassim. We'll be back with Fitz. If you like that video, then put a ring on it. Click the subscribe button below. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. <laughs>